שלום עליכם רבותיי, שלום עליכם, בעזרת השם נדמיר את הצדיק רבי חיים פיטו, מדמיר את מי גרנדפאדר רבי משה אהרון פיטו, מדמיר את מי גרנדפאדר רבי מאיר אבו חצירה, מהקדוש ברוך הוא בית השם גבר מונדיק, ברכה והצלחה, בשיעתא דשמיא גדולה, מלכת העלמא וברכת קון וזקת קון, מדמיר את עוד הצדיקים מהקדוש ברוך הוא בית השם אורנה וגיץ פרנסה, נגיץ וישועה, נגיץ וזיווג, נגיץ ומזל, נגיץ בית השם ותשובה, מהקדוש ברוך הוא בית השם מספר להם full of shefa, spiritually, physically, and we will all be redeemed from all our troubles, and as a nation, redeemed Be'at Hashem with Be'at HaMashiach, Amen, Ken Yeratzu, Be'at HaMashiach. You know, but today is a very special day for two reasons. First of all, it's a very beautiful day because it is the day after Shavuot, where we come down from the mountain where we receive the Torah. It's first, essentially the first day of our Torahic year, and it's a big opportunity, I would say, to truly take ourselves into equation and to start Be'at Hashem, to set our goals on where we want to be, where we want to be, our, where we want to find ourselves spiritually, Torahically, for the entire year to come. And if we're able to do so in the beginning, if we set our target from the beginning of the Torahic year, Bezat Hashem, we will be able not only to meet it, but hopefully Bezat Hashem, with the help of all the tzaddikim and the help of, 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 uh, of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we will be able to exceed it. Amen. But today, Abotai, is a very special day, because it's also the Ilula of Rabbi Meir Abu Chatzira, my grandfather. Now, Baruch Hashim, we always talk about Rabbi Chaim Pinto and uh, my father's side, but a lot of times we put aside my mother's side. I know that Rabbi Meir Abuchatira was a very special tzaddik, not like any other. Now, but there are two types of tzaddikim that exist. There are one type of tzaddik that is a public tzaddik. He is a rab that stands in the eyes of the public, where he's able to influence people, he's able to get to people because of the fact that he's in the public. And that's how he pulls people out, how he spreads the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Thousands of people see him, thousands, thousands of people listen, thousands of people get inspired, and that's the path. And then there's another type of tzaddik that is much more rare, especially in today's generation, where it is the hidden tzaddik. It's what we call tzaddik nistar. Where it's a type of tzaddik that he does have a avodat HaKadosh Baruch Hu, completely in the shadows, and he's able to influence people in the shadows where he's able to pull people towards light of HaKadosh Baruch he's able to put his seeds in ways that people don't even know that they're being uh, exposed to such light or to such influence. And that is his strength. But you know, Abba Teh, Rabbi Meir was a Tzadik Nistar, but not just like any Tzadik Nistar. He was Tzadik Nistar at another level. You know, to be at the place where Rabbi Meir was and to still keep himself hidden is a true accomplishment. And he even mentioned that throughout his entire life, where he always had the sentence that he would hold on to. He would always say, it's not easy to be poor. Or it's not easy to be hidden. It's not easy to be, uh, 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 to stay at such level. But that was Rabbi Meir's biggest strength. You know, but throughout the years, we've been able to, Akash Baruch Hu mirrored us to be able to meet people from all around the world. Everywhere we go, we always meet people that say, you know, Rabbi Meir Abu Chatzira, and they tell us a special story about him. But each story was very unique, specifically just to them. Each one says, he said, you know, when I met Rabbi Meir, he told me one word that didn't make sense. But that one word was cooking in my head and my heart for a week or two. And after a week or two, I understood really, truly who I was in front of. And that's how he influenced so many thousands of people. Where he truly smuggled Mamash smuggled light, smuggled seeds of Torah, of, of mitzvot, of emunah into people's heart without even them realizing that he was there. And that's what he actually called himself in his book, Man of Faith. What did he call himself? He called himself, uh, 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 he called himself what? The smuggler. Where he always was able to smuggle light to enrich people's nishamot, to find every single person for who he is and to enrich it and to clean it and to value it on who we are as Jews, as diamonds on an individual level where he truly lived what Rabbi Nachman de Mikos says, where each Jew is like a diamond coin, just needs a little bit polishing, and that was Rabbi Meir. It didn't matter if a person was wealthy, if he was a man of honor, if he was a man of fame, if he was a man of, of, of poverty, it didn't matter to, to him. Rabbi Meir, it was each man for who he was as a neshama, and Rabbi Meir was able to influence each, each and every one of, 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 of the people he met on his own level. We like what we said on Shabbat, where HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu, Red min ahar, go down from the mountain. B'nai Israel are not at the level where you are, above the mountain, go down, be at their level in order to influence them. Rabbi Meir did that, but on a very individual level. 
But Rabotai is something that, that any tzaddik could only, could only wish to accomplish such, 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 a, such influence. With, where, where, where a person can be like an elevator. Go to each person at his own level, to each person at what he's going through and affect him. And that's why Rabotai, I truly believe that it's an opportunity for us today. Because in a century, the tzaddik, what he stood for when he was alive, is what he's going to stand for after 120 years. If the tzaddik his entire life always stood for the fact that helping each and every one, regardless of his level, his state, who he is as a person, just coming forward to help one's neshama, then today that he's no longer here, it didn't, nothing changed. If he was able to do so when he was alive, to such high levels, then you can only imagine now that he does not have limitation, what he can do if a person just only reaches his hand out, asking for help, asking for merit, that's why it's so important and it's such a great opportunity tonight to light a candle for Abu Abu Khatira. And if you would like, you could even say, you know what, my grandson sent me to you. So it's like we say in Hebrew, protectia. Uh, protectia. It's a connection. Connection. Go do it. And that is what Abu Abu I want everyone to do. Light a candle to Abu Spill your heart out. Be honest with Abu Meir. Abu Meir always, he, 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 he fed of people's good, of people's bad, of people's flaws, of people's uh, 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 strengths. Abotai, it's a great opportunity. But before Abotai we end, I would like to say a story. That this story really uh, was a revelation for me of who really Rabbi Meir, my grandfather, was. Because you know, when you have a person that truly worked all his entire life to be hidden and to not be seen by anyone. And suddenly you see truly that he was connected to all these big tzaddikim his entire life. You really start to put into proportion and to put in place who Rabbi Meir was and where he fell in. Now, but at one time, I was near to say when I was in Shiva. We, I, I was very involved with a certain bit of Knesset where I lived. And one Shabbat, a few of my cousins, they came to spend Shabbat with us. And they wanted to go to a different bit knesset. So I said, you know, whatever is going to make the, the mishpacha happy, whatever is going to make the cousin happy, we do. So we waited for them and we waited for them. And they came from a different city, they came from Yerushalayim. So they were late. So by the time they came to the house, they got ready for Shabbat, we were late for tefillah. Now it's, it's never nice to be late for tefillah because we miss a part of the, of the prayer, but also not good to show an example. So we came late, we entered the bit knesset. And by the time we already entered, it was already time when the Rav gave his Dvar Torah. Now it's a big bit Knesset in Ashdod and Tetvav, maybe five or six hundred people. And the Rav is standing on a Echad, giving his Dvar Torah, and we came in. And when he came in, a lot of people recognized uh, uh, the Pinto boys. So a lot of the people got up, and then we caused a little bit of a, of, of a commotion uh, within the, the, the speech of the Rav. So I felt very bad at it. So I went to the corner, what we sat down, we found our corner, and we said, we're going to lay low and put our heads down. So this Rav was a very old Rav. Big white beard, Shechina. Behemet, he was like Malach Hashem Tzavakot. The entire Dvar Torah, I see the Rav is looking at me. And I said, uh, uh, maybe I upset him. Maybe I, 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 I hurt him, the fact that I came late. And maybe I made people, people moved, made some noise, it bothered him in the Dvar Torah. I didn't feel good about it. But the entire Dvar Torah, his eyes were, were, were locked on me. I said, Hashem, I'm going to put my head down and wait for, for this to pass, do my tefillah and leave. The Rav finishes the Dvar Torah. Says Shabbat Shalom, doesn't spend one moment telling anyone anything, but walks straight up to me. I said, why, yeah, yeah, he's going to come, he's going to tell me, why did I do this? Why did I, I said, you know what, I'm going to, get the Makai, deserve it. So he walked up to me, he says, are you the son of uh, Rabbi Yaakov? I said, yes. He said, you're the, the, the grandson of Rabbi Meir Abu Hatira? I said, yes. He said, your, father is, uh, your grandfather is Rabbi Moshe Pinto? I said, yes. So he said, I have a story to tell you. I said, okay. So he said, you know, when I was 23 years old, I was not religious at all. And I lived in France. Not only that I wasn't religious, the Rav, this is the Rav saying the story. He said, I hated Rabbanim. I hated the Torah. I hated the religion of Hashem. But I was starting to learn architecture. And my family told me that there is this tzaddik that is coming from Morocco. He will be in France for a few weeks. 
go to this tzaddik and receive a bracha from him. Who is this tzaddik? It's the son of Rabbi Chaim Pinto. What is his name? Rabbi Moshe Pinto. So he says, you know, I was 23. I didn't believe in anything. But I said, what is going to hurt to receive a bracha? So I went to him and I sat down with him and I asked for a bracha. So Rabbi Moshe looks at me, the left is now telling me, and Rabbi Moshe says, you know, you're going to go to New York, you're going to do Teshuvah by a Rav Abu Chatzira, and we will meet in Ashdod. And this young French boy, he says, what is the connection between me and New York? And what is this Abu Chatzira name? And what is Ashdod Bichlal? Ashdod didn't even exist at that time. Now we're talking maybe 65 years ago. What is Ashdod Bichlal? So the young boy, this is the Ravi, which he's talking about himself, says, I didn't put any connections. I said, maybe the Rav is mistaking who I am. He doesn't know what he's saying. He's talking about Ashdod, Abu Chatzira, New York. I'm not studying here to, to, to be an architecture here in, in France. What's the connection? I don't know. So he said, Amen, 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 and he left. Two years passed, and the Rav says, his, him and a few group of his cousins decided to go for, on a vacation. Where did they decide to go? New York. They, took, they bought tickets, they flew to New York. They stayed in New York for a few weeks. And one Saturday day, they were at the beach or something like that. And someone said, we're going to a, a, a Fabringen of this Rav, Rabbi Meir Abu Chatzira. And it was known that Rabbi Meir Abu Chatzira, his Melave Malka, it was, it was like Gan Eden, it was the Shekhinah was there. So they said, come. So the Rav tells me, he said, no, he's a not religious young boy. I said, what is it going to hurt? There are going to be some young people, some singing, I will go. And he went. And when he was there, he met Rabbi Meir Abu Chatzira. And Rabbi Meir Abu Chatzira, like he did with everyone, was able to completely uh, turn the person's head into, into, to see the light of the Torah and to completely transform his life in a moment. This Raf says, you know, when I was 23, I decided that Rabbi Meir, he mesmerized me. I want to stay with him. So he extended his trip another two months. And he said, I stayed with Rabbi Meir Abu Chatzira your grandfather, not connecting what Rabbi Moshe told him a year before. After two months, he started to do Teshuvah, he started to keep Shabbat, he says, and then he said, I want to go to Eretz Israel. So after two months, he moved to Eretz Israel, went to Yeshiva for two years, and became a Rav. After he became a Rav, he went to Yerushalayim, and he said, I searched for a community to build, to start off my life. But everyone in Yerushalayim told them, they said, you know, you are a Moroccan young boy, that you want to become a Rav of a Moroccan community. Yerushalayim is not the place for you. They're building this city in the desert from Moroccans called Ashdod. Go there. Maybe there you'll have some better luck of building a community. So the Rav tells me, he says, you know, I went to Ashdod and I was trying to, to build something, trying to find my place. And they told me that there was a big tzaddik that just moved from Morocco. Go get a bracha from him. Who is he? Rabbi Moshe Pinto. So he tells me, he said, no, I still didn't do any of the connections. I went to get a bracha from the tzaddik, and when I arrived at the house of the tzaddik, I saw Rabbi Moshe, and the entire story clicked. Where Rabbi Moshe told me, 20 years previous, that what? That you will do teshuvah by an Abu Chatzira, and we meet in Ashdod. He said, when he arrived to Rabbi Moshe, he told me, Rabbi Moshe, he said, Rabbi Moshe, you told me 20 years ago that this would happen. So Abu Moshe, like he always was, also a hidden tzaddik, what did he do? He smiled and laughed. He said, it doesn't matter, my son. It doesn't matter, Benny. Give him a bracha and he left. So Zerav said, look, Rabbi Meir, your grandfather, from the other side of the world, he was able to work with partnership with your other grandfather, Rabbi Moshe, in order to bring me back to the Teshuvah. So he said, but I really, how Rabbi Meir, he was a part of this big network of uh, putting specific neshamot at specific places in order to to help B'nai Israel in order to spread the light of HaKadosh Baruch And Rabbi Meir hasn't stopped and he won't stop for many years to come. So may the merit of B'nai Israel, my grandfather, Rabbi Meir Abu Chatzira, may HaKadosh Baruch Hu bless each and every one of our holy keilah, may he guide each and every one of our holy keilah, may the same way he did so when he was always when he was alive, being able to put a seed of inspiration in each and every one of the hearts that he met, may he be able to do so today, B'nai Israel, and we all receive that seed of B'nai and we all B'nai uh, receive and reach to a complete redemption. Amen, Kenyatso.